Now we'll hear from John Shushard, the uh, lawyer member of the Plowshares 8. Well, uh, I was told that maybe you'd like to hear a little bit from the court what's going on. And I'm not sure just what, you know, what you'd like to know, so I'd like to say a few things, then maybe uh, take two or three questions, uh, if there are particular things that you'd like to, to hear about. Dan said that the uh, court is, uh, you know, reminiscent of the charnel house, the morgue. It's a place of death. And to be in that atmosphere, uh, hour after hour, is very, very draining. Uh, it's kind of a hopeless and a despairing place. Uh, I don't think many Americans really understand what a courtroom is all about, because it's a rather expensively built building ordinarily, and a rather prominent place in town that uh, seems to be on a par with the church. And uh, as far as location and geography, you know, it's very often on the square, on the hill. But, uh, and the decorum in the courtroom is always, uh, is always uh, a matter of extreme importance. Uh, people speak quietly there and politely. And uh, the greatest thing to be abhorred is some word spoken in anger or an outburst, as it's called. And uh, yet the other side of the court is the prison. And if there's any, anything, any institution that the court reminds me of uh, today, I think particularly it's the slave market. I think one day we will all come to look at these courts as we now look at the slave market. They're good men and women, mostly men though, well-intended people, great deal of officiousness surrounding what happens there. Do you know these judges have never been arrested? They've never spent a minute in handcuffs. They've never spent a day in prison. And they hand out years and years and years of prison terms as though they knew what they were doing. The fact is they are selling people's lives. They're trading in human lives. So we understand what the good news was that Jesus preached of liberty to the captives, of freedom to the prisoners. And who are going to free those prisoners? It's only you and I that can free the prisoners. And we don't call the police. As Henry Nouwen said, when we have that little bit and somebody takes it from us, we give it gladly. And we turn the other cheek. We end this rotten institution. Well, I feel a little better already just talking about that. <laughs> uh, one thing that's happening is the public is being kept out. We're going through jury selection. It's a public trial. We'd like to have you there or whoever you know of you is, is able to come. But uh, although the court is empty, except for uh, some members of the press, the judge will not let you in. He's violating your rights. He's violating our rights. Uh, Molly Rush's two children you know, are 12 and 14 years old. It's extremely important in their family that they be present throughout the trial. And they're being excluded not only during jury selection, but from the beginning to the end. At points like this, the judge becomes extremely concerned about our rights. He's afraid that the children might become bored and possibly disrupt the trial. It's the only time which he, when he seems to be concerned about our rights is when we ask uh, for something that seems perfectly reasonable. And you know you do get tired asking for something that's perfectly reasonable uh, again and again and again and having it refused. And that's kind of the process that we're going through. It looks as though this jury selection process will go on for a couple more days before we get into the 
the trial itself. Well, that is what I can say is going on. The fact is, I don't know what's going on. I don't think any of us know what's going on. I think something's going on uh, that's beyond anything we can, you know, really guess at. I, I find it kind of a, a, a hopeless and despairing scene inside that courtroom, uh, and yet I believe that something hopeful is going on despite that. I'm sure it is. Are there any particular questions that people would like to ask? Well, <clears throat> someone told me that uh, the judge had given the defense permission to ask the prospective jurors if they know that they can decide the case on their conscience. Is that true? Well, the judge is going back and forth on what we can ask and what we can't ask. But uh, s there has been some questioning about conscience permitted. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. Dan, is there anything that can be done in a hurry by the public outside to open up the court and appeal to the chief judge to run the special court? Is there anything that can be done on a cap basis? Anything about race or I really don't think so. Although there's possible direct action that might be taken. Uh, <laughs> the question was, is there anything that can be done uh, by the public to gain access to the court? Uh, in, in the way of going to federal court or another court seeking a court order. Uh, I said I didn't know of anything, you know, that would be likely to be successful, especially uh, in a few days. However, there's the possibility of direct action. Well... Okay. Uh, the purpose of a, of a jury selection is to ask a series of questions about the individual's attitudes and opinions and possible biases, particularly in a case like this where practically every member of the jury has read uh, a considerable amount about this case or heard about it or had it uh, talked about it at work. The judge has taken the view that the uh, that he's seeking a fair and impartial jury and therefore an appropriate question into a person's uh, biases or attitudes or opinions that they may have formed would go like this. If you have read anything about this case, would you be willing to set it aside and become a fair and impartial juror if you were selected? And everybody says yes. In fact, nobody has indicated that they would like to be an unfair and partial juror. <laughs> So, so we have uh, tried to bring this into some real life uh, level of communication. Uh, we destroyed two nuclear weapons. Uh, nuclear weapons have to be mentioned. It's an extremely you know, volatile, uh, emotional uh, subject about which people have deep, deep feelings. It's exactly the kind of subject that should be uh, thoroughly questioned in voir dire, as it's called, in the questioning of the potential jurors. Uh, we pour blood, human blood, because of the power of the symbol, because of the strength of reaction and response uh, that, that the blood as the essence of life means to all of us. Uh, we need to be ask, able to ask questions about that. Uh, we need to ask about Hiroshima and Nagasaki. There has to be some some relationship to uh, our common human experiences. These are the kinds of questions that uh, are being, are, we're having very great difficulty asking. And uh, so 
hour after hour after hour is uh, devoted to the effort to ask the questions with uh, the prosecutor just popping up, uh, objecting, and, and being sustained, and the judge uh, uh, trying to uh, prevent this communication. And that's the way I see it. Uh, I'm, uh, and we, we, yet we feel that there's some, uh, some worthwhile communication going on with the jurors, and so we've gone through uh, this questioning process with groups of four jurors. And uh, we've, this, today we've gone through four groups of four. Yesterday we started out with a panel of, of 40 jurors who came in and were asked, the first question was asked if they had read anything and formed an opinion. Well, a, about half the hands went up and the heads nodded, and then it was asked whether they uh, could set that opinion aside, and nine of them stood up and said absolutely not. Uh, they could not be impartial. Well, that's about uh, a fourth, 25 percent of that panel, which uh, gives us a, a pretty clear indication. Uh, then the uh, judge made some kind of hostile remarks uh, directed in our direction, and so uh, decided to dismiss the whole 40 after we objected. And uh, so we're starting with a new set of 40, and he set up a new process where we're, there, we're being questioned four at a time. Okay, I think that's... Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, John, for those remarks and the update. Uh, 